Welcome to this special live webcast brought to you by the Conference Board, along with our sponsor, Root. Please ask questions. through the chat box on the bottom left-hand side of your screen. Green, and our panelists will Hello. Hello, and welcome to today's session on transforming your customer experience for a transformed world. Some of the critical questions and issues we will be answering today are how to transform your customer experience and how leaders can engage employees to deliver a reinvented customer experience. All right, good news. CEU credits are available for those of you who stick with us throughout the session. If you're interested in earning credit, type your name, email address, and credit type in the designated box below. And if you wish to earn CPE credit, also check the three pop-up boxes that appear throughout the program. We're ready. Well, hi, Rochelle. Good morning to you in Texas. I'm talking to you from Florida today. How Good. Are you, things Rochelle? are great. We are, we are 58 strong this morning, Gary. And hello to each of you 58 people. I am Gary Magenta. I'm the Senior Vice President and Chief Change Architect at Root Inc. Where I've had the pleasure of hanging out for the last 20 years, learning lots from all of you, and I'd like to share a bit back with you today. What about you? Well, I am a leadership development coach with Root and love that we're circled up in a virtual uh, huddle today to talk about what we can do for the customer. It's going to be interesting because it's an interesting time. It's a very interesting time. And what we know is that this time of transforming your customer experience, this time to really engage people in this transformed world requires change. And you, those 58 strong in the audience, well, change starts here with you today. So we welcome you all. We hope you're going to get a lot out of our time together. Because what we know is at no time has customer experience been more important to your organizations or to our customers. In fact, we're all trying to figure out what's next for our customers' experience and how we're going to create it, how we're going to deliver that new experience. And what we know, Rochelle, is that we must act differently and more deliberately to deliver a transformed customer experience in today's world. And it calls for reimagining the employee experience as well, because we're going to talk about today the fact that your customer experience can never exceed that employee experience. And the good news is that Rochelle and I are here to help you walk through all of those subjects today. We actually have a few promises for you. During our time together, we're going to discuss invention or reinvention. We know that necessity is the mother of invention, and this time, mother has a yes. stopwatch. It's not just about inventing or reinventing. You've got to do it quickly. You have to do it now. And we're going to talk about some steps to transform that experience at the pace of the marketplace. So in doing that, we'll be sharing some tips to engage and lead your team to deliver this reinvented customer experience because it's going to rely on them. Absolutely. Leaders are critical. We can't do it without them. Your customer experience is absolutely at risk. If you only do what you did four weeks ago, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, 12 weeks ago, it's changing and it's changing rapidly. In essence, we're not in Kansas anymore. And no matter how many times you click those heels, we're not going back. We're not going home. And if you're joining from yeah. Kansas, just kind of work with you. Okay? <laughs> we're glad you're here. Please. We yeah, are. And we're really curious right. to know where you, so we're 83 strong now, Gary, and uh, we're not in Kansas anymore. Things are changing. We're going to talk about that today. But what we would like to do is meet you where you are. So let us know, where are you, like literally, and where do you wish you were? Tell us in the chat panel. We want to get an active chat going. We're 84 strong. Make sure you're sending to everyone. Go ahead and let us know, where are you? Where do you wish you were? It could be the same answer, but it might be different. Yeah. Yeah. Early yes. Early morning. 
lead oh, us. Oh, Maui. I love Virginia. that comparison. Virginia, Princeton. Is that Princeton, New Jersey? Because I'm from New Jersey originally. Sugarland, Dallas, Princeton, Texas. Texans are in the house. Minnesota. And they don't want to be anywhere Randy. else. <laughs> Randy, I used to live in Sarasota. Now I'm in Naples. Good to see you. All right. Our friend Phil in uh, Northbrook wishes he was in Hawaii. We wish we were in Hawaii too, Phil. Mountains. Somebody wants to be in the mountains. The Texans want to be in Texas, Gary. I just want to call that out. <laughs> well, yeah, Plano especially, which yep. is nice. And we Chicago. I live in Chicago, Stephanie, right half in. the year, so good to see yeah. you. Yeah, we've got people who want to be in Bali, who want to be in Hawaii. Um, we have people who are from all over the country yeah. with us today. Welcome. Thanks for joining. You. And for some of you, you're exactly where you want to be. And there are other of you who would, oh, yeah. So here we are, summer. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else but Huntsville, and yeah. Alabama. Well, I have to tell you, I feel the same way. I'm very happy to be exactly where I am. So welcome again to all of you. What we know is that if you're here, you're likely with a business that's either struggling or thriving or somewhere in between. If you're with the airlines or movie theaters, restaurants, hotels, this is super tough for you. This is the worst crisis we've ever seen in those industries. But if you're making toilet paper or you're selling groceries or hosting video conferencing like the one we're in today, you're booming. There's just not enough hours in the day for you. So we see it all over the place from really struggling to thriving. So we're really curious here. Would you say that you are struggling or thriving or somewhere in between? What's that question, okay. Michelle? Well, now we're thinking in terms of our organization because all, all of us are working hard amidst some chaos and uncertainty. Are, are we struggling? Give us a one. If you're thriving, a five. Let us know in the chat box. Where are you on a scale of one to five, struggling or thriving? Let's see in the chat box. We've got some fours, twos, and threes. Some fours and fives, I, twos and threes is what our guess was going to be, and that looks like a sweet spot. I'm happy about the fours and the fives. That's exciting. I have not seen a one yet. No, but, yeah. Twos, lots of twos, threes, but we've got some fours and fives, so we are all over the place. For those of you who are fours and wow. fives, thank you. Fantastic. For those of you who are in twos and threes, here's what I just say. Twos and threes are, you know, really tough. It's tough to be in, and we've got to change that. We have to change that primarily through our customer experience that needs to be reinvented. For those of you who are in those fours and fives, it's great, as I said, but likely this new world is requiring you to think differently as well. In other words, your strategy is anywhere from decimated to accelerated, but either way, you're going to need to boost or reboot that strategy to meet today's times. And for many of us, we're moving forward, we're trucking along in this customer experience 2020, and we had a plan. But the reality is, things have accelerated. We can't be working, Rochelle, on a 2020 customer no, no. experience strategy anymore. We actually have to be thinking 2023 because this pandemic has accelerated that customer experience. It's advanced at at least three years in what customers need and want from us. And now more than ever, in order to respond to that, your team members all need to be rowing in the same direction. There's that mother of invention guiding this ship and she's yelling, change course. And she's got a stopwatch because you have to change course and you have to do it quickly and on a dime. Well, there's some people out there that are real winners and being able to sort of meet these needs. And then there's some losers. And I've got an example, a personal example of each of those. So let's talk winner. American Airlines falls into that struggling area. All airlines fall into that struggling area right now. But I will tell you that I uh, fly American Airlines quite a bit for business in the old world. And I got a personal call, Rochelle. My phone rang with somebody from American Airlines who was asking me how I was. Not, hey, when are you gonna get back in the air? We haven't seen you buy a ticket in a while. It was, hey, Gary, just, this is American Airlines checking in on you. Are you okay? Oh my goodness, they treated me with humanity as a human being. Now, full disclosure, American Airlines is a client of mine, but I'm also a big customer of theirs. And the fact that someone reached out, 
I know my name is on a list, but the fact that a human being reached out, I thought at this time was just great. And they weren't trying to sell me something, they were just checking in. What humanity. On the other hand, I will just share with everybody, I lost my dad last week to COVID-19, which obviously is a, a devastating moment in anybody's um, life. But one of my teams that I work with quite a bit at Root sent me a basket, which was lovely. And the company that they used was offering personal handwritten notes in the baskets. It's a concierge, a concierge service they were offering. Let us put in a handwritten note, not typed, et cetera. What a great concept during this time to connect with people. What a great way to demonstrate flexibility as a company. But there was an epic fail. I got the note and it said, and the note is right here, it says, Gary and family, during this difficult time, we wanted to send a little something um, to bring comfort to your home. We are thinking of you from afar and our thoughts are with you from afar. All our love, your sales team and friends. Here's the kicker. P.S. A little birdie told us the really great news. Congrats to you and sending you a great hug, XO. Oh. What? Oh my goodness. Epic fail. What is this? A little birdie told us the really great news. Is this a condolence card? Or did I just win a sweepstake? I was so confused. So I called my friends at Root and said, Thank you so much for the condolence basket. What's the really great news? What did I miss? Well, it turns out that this company conflated a condolence card with a congratulations, you're having a baby or something like that. This is an epic fail. What broke down in their system? So during this time, while companies are trying to do things differently, like make a human interaction and call you or send a personal handwritten note, we had a real positive and a real negative this week. I have to tell you that at a sad time, my family and I have been laughing nonstop about this card. So there is a bit of, a bit of humor in there. What we need to do and where this company really failed is we have to be able to engage and interact with our customers telephonically, electronically, and face-to-face. -face. All of those things need to come together and our employees need to take all of those inputs and create one seamless deliverable. We gave you an example of where it worked and an example of where it didn't work. Thank you so much for your condolences in the chat box and Very um, for your your understanding of the humor behind that. So today, your customer experience, your customers, well, what are they concerned about? They're concerned about their personal safety if they're interacting with you. Whether you're coming to the door, they're coming into your location, B2B or B2C, they're worried about interaction with safety. They've become accustomed to a new level of convenience and things like that interaction, like you'll write that handwritten note they're craving that interaction. And employees are too, Gary. They're, they, they're the mirror side of the customers. Employees are concerned about their personal safety. Uh, they've become accustomed to new work routines. This has been a very demanding time and also crave interaction. It's a mirror. It is absolutely a mirror. Your employees and your customers really want and need the same thing. So new standards are emerging. If you've been to the grocery store, for sure. Social distancing, I was at a Whole Food the other day, mask, gloves, and the sign six feet apart, keeping you apart at checkout and somebody wiping down the self-checkout. And then these folks in Glasgow to the right are wearing their mask while they're, they have a corona up. And what they're really craving is that interaction, and they're worried about safety too. And while there's humor in this picture, really what they're demonstrating is where we're all out at. We want to get together, and we want to be safe. And these are the things that your customers are asking from you today. An example with Hilton, again, full disclosure, they are a, a client and they supplied this slide. They have been focused on this keyless entry, this skip the front desk check-in to get to your room through your smartphone for years. You've been able to do it for the last couple of years. And it's sort of been a nice to have, but not a must have. Overnight, that is transformed into, I got to get to my room without having to stop and interact. On top of that, you'll notice above this key that Hilton, like other hotel companies who have this keyless entry, 
are also now recognizing that we're concerned about our safety in the room. So in this example, Hilton has started with clean stay and they are putting a seal on the room where it is cleaned and sealed for your protection. So here's an example of where technology is really stepping up to make sure that you are reducing face-to-face -face time and then really letting you know, we thought about you and cleaned this room specifically to you, for you. Well, cleaning a room and this smartphone have now become an integral part of customer experience and so that keyless entry, Gary, that is actually um, not a new idea. It's been around for a while, but it's kind of taken on a new life as a result of what is now needed. So I'm curious. We are actually almost 100 strong, <clears throat> and so we've got some good power chatters today. I'm wondering what ideas you guys might have and what you've seen with respect to ideas that had a life and are now like the new standard. What have you been noticing? What are some ideas that were on the forefront before and have come catapulting as a result of the pandemic, of the COVID crisis? We've got some people typing. And while they're doing that, I want to let you know that we do, uh, Lance is a, one of our power chatters today, and he's talking about, Gary, a new level of convenience, but also a new level of inconvenience. Yeah. Sure. Well, I talked about the inconvenience. I was on the phone with Hilton today and uh, the other day, and I said, you know, it's been okay when this, when this works. And it works most of the time, but now it needs to work right. all of the time to make sure it's always convenient. Lance. Zoom and Skype says yeah. John. Yeah, and we had curbside. I'm wondering if it's John Edwards the psychic. Oh, or a different if that's John doctor. Edwards, then he knows what's going to happen. Do tell us. <laughs> so, yeah, Zoom and Skype have exploded. Home delivery again, John. Big working from home for sure. Um, virtual inspections for insurance claims. And what about the virtual doctor's appointments? I have heard some really, you know, cover your eyes and ears stories about doctor's appointments online. On-demand church services, says Joe. Daniel wants some of this yeah. to stick. Daniel's like, hey, I'm loving this. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Like, what, what are we not going to let go of now, right, Gary? We're used to it. We've been spoiled. Daniel, you are yeah. so right. There are things we're never going back on, ever. I'm with you on that. So let's just talk about that because there's some guiding principles for engaging your people and your customers moving forward because Daniel is right. I don't, you don't want to go back to work. And Lori, this, this curbside and home um, yes. uh, deliveries, we're, we're into that. We may never want to change from that. So we've got to think about three things in this new reimagined customer experience and employee experience. <laughs> they are humanity. And I mentioned a few stories with humanity already. Flexibility, which you're saying, I want to work from home and curbside. You may, Daniel, want to go in the office some days, right? So there's flexibility there and accessibility to the things we need to do our jobs or to interact with our customers or have our customers interact with us. So I want to share a bit of a story which has those three, three, three elements in it. This is a pre-COVID-19 story, but this was a company that was already accelerating their customer experience. They're already there. My wife and I had just become empty nesters and we we're on a short vacation and we were remodeling our brand new empty nest house or condo, I should say, empty nest condo. And we're on a short vacation and I get a call from my younger son who's in college and he says, hey dad, I've got an internship. This internship, uh, he was helped to get by uh, our friend Phil. He connected him, and he went in for the interview, and they gave it to him. And I said, oh, that's fantastic. And he said, and I'm coming to stay with you and mom at the new condo in Chicago. Now, remember, I'm on vacation when he calls. And I say, great, when are you coming? He said, this weekend. I said, well, we're still in the middle of renovations, and we don't have any furniture in the guest room, but don't worry about it. Looking forward to see you this weekend. I'll figure it out. And I immediately flipped up my laptop and started looking for furniture for that room and found a bedroom set that worked by size and the construction looked good. And we were looking for something in gray. And I couldn't tell on the computer if it was the right gray. You know, sometimes colors are distorted on our desktops. So I was on electronically and I decided to pick up the phone and call the customer service representative. I got the customer service representative on the phone. I'll never forget her. Her name was Maria. And she said, I said, this is an unreasonable question, but can you describe the color to me? 
And she said, well, of course I can. Have you ever been camping? Yes, I have. And roasted marshmallows? Of course. And has any of those marshmallows ever caught on fire? Yes. And dropped into the flames? Yes. Well, when that marshmallow drops into the flame, that little puff of smoke that comes up, that gray warm smoke that comes from the flame when the marshmallow hits it, that's the color gray that bedroom set is. Boom! Your mind explodes. Did you just describe that? I'll take two. I will take two of those bedroom sets. I don't have a place for them. But that description was so amazing that I was in. I was emotionally connected. I felt the color. But I was also amazed, given my background in, in, in customer experience, I needed to know more. How did she get to that place? And, and all I asked her was, can you describe this color for me? And what she did was demonstrate that humanity. She viewed me as an individual. She took the time to treat me, Rochelle, like a friend or, or a family member and describe that story. And she was connecting with my feelings and emotions. She wasn't saying, this is sturdy. I know the measurements will fit. She corrected, connected with my feelings and emotions and described color. Oh my goodness. Well, I then had to dig in further and say, well, do you work in one of the showrooms? I mean, how do you know that color so well? How can you describe that? Do you work in a showroom? And this is where she really talked to me about flexibility and accessibility. No, I work from home, she told me. And I have a small child. My husband works outside the house and I get to work in the house. And wow, from that, I get to balance both. And I just felt for her, I was a young working parent at one time. So how did you describe that color if you're not in a showroom, I asked her. And she said, well, I've got samples and I've got swatches here. I have all the information I need online and the tools that I need. I've got great technology and I'm empowered to get up from here and go into showrooms when I need to in order to touch and feel and sit in those showrooms and get up close and personal with the merchandise. It was, Rochelle, one of the best customer experiences I had. I ended up ordering and I used all of the elements we talked about, but she demonstrated humanity and she clearly had flexibility and accessibility all at her fingertips. So you look at these three guiding principles for engaging our people, um, and our customers of humanity, flexibility, and accessibility. And we want to talk to you about it. We want to hear from you. So, Rochelle, what's our question? Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm loving what's going on in the chat. You guys keep going. When we talk about these three guiding principles, it's interesting to think about how they apply to what we do today. So we're going to go with a thumbs up, thumbs down. Let's talk about thumbs up first. For us in our work with these guiding principles, how many of us think we're leading into thumbs up experiences? Which ones are you strong at? Yeah. Is, are, is your organization excelling when it comes to humanity? Are you better at flexibility or is accessibility your stick? Where is a thumbs up in your organization from these three? Where's the What's thumb? going on, guys? And while they're answering, okay. Tamara Holt, yes. also the name of a newscaster in Chicago, Tamara will want to know if I could share the name of the company. I will do that. It is Room and Board, and they were exceptional. And we're hearing here... A lot of people are really oh. good at humanity and flexibility. And flexibility. John says all three. All three. Welcome, Tamara. Flexibility. So there's one that says all three, but a lot of people feel humanity and flexibility, one and two. One and two, flexibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so where, where about, let's do a thumbs down. Where, about, where might we have an opportunity? Where do you see you could get tripped up and people are not pointed in the same direction. They're sending notes with condolences and congratulations. <laughs> it's a downward arrow. Where, where might there be a risk? Humanity, flexibility, or accessibility? Okay, so accessibility, yeah. accessibility, accessibility. Humanity, humanity. humanity, yeah. Yeah. Well, humanity, yeah. humanity. Forget the people. Humanity and flexibility, yeah. Accessibility, all three again all over. Okay. Well, what's interesting. interesting about that, and no surprise, of course, Rochelle, is that organizations are all different. Cultures are all different. So, of course, you're going to have a different mix. And what we are here to tell you is that in this world, you must have all three. And you must have all three working together in order to win. If you want yeah. all of these things, if you want people to do right, they need to think right. 
And for them to think right, we need to help them with a great manager. Every single one of your frontline people responsible for delivering that B2B or B2C customer experience need a great manager who treats them exactly the way we want your customers to be treated. Because we know your customer experience will never exceed your employee experience. That's right. And so Lance is asking the question, how do you find these people and how do you keep them happy? Well, when we talk about Maria's interaction with Gary, what we're looking at is something that's fueled by engagement, right? And we're, we know that leaders are the ones that are helping with this. Leaders, people leaders are chief engagement officers and it's going to be up to them to move the dial and help employees, okay? Especially during times of uncertainty. And a lot of this has to do with the mindset, Gary, and that's what you were talking about. If we think right, we do right. I don't think Maria had a policy manual telling her to describe gray in terms of a marshmallow in a, in a campfire, okay? She just knew to do that instinctively and there's reasons why that mindset is showing up in her organization. And so we've got a couple of tips for leaders as to how we can help create this environment where people feel engaged. Yeah, before we go there, there's a question. Uh, part of that question was, where do you find these people? Yes. Right? So this is just, it's not part of our tips today. And I'm sure many of you know this, but oftentimes we're looking for somebody with that job experience or background that matches us perfectly. And I'm not a believer in that. In my 30 years in customer experience, what I will tell you is hire for personality hire for disposition. You can teach people are smart. Yeah. You can teach them anything, but hire the personality, hire for the heart, and then move on from there and teach them. I'm sorry to break your rhythm, Rochelle. No, you actually I'm feeding off the chat too because Deborah's talking about the unsung heroes on the front lines and I know we have felt that way a lot about teachers and now we're starting to understand people in food retail and people that are at the front door. It's serious, y'all. We There's got to be a way for us to help them make this better and that is going to involve us as leaders making things better for them. Okay. So that leads us to our tips. Yep. <laughs> I know, I'm just feeding. <laughs> You know, that leads us to our tips. And so, so the first thing I want to mention is the importance of putting people first. This is the first tip to making sure that people are engaged. And I imagine that Maria's leader has this frame of mind. When we think about the things that Maria shared with Gary, um, she was being a human being. And I think it's because she's being treated as a human being. And each team member has a different set of skills and circumstances. And it's the job of the leader to know those and leverage them because it's people that deliver the experience. Thank you for feeding that thought, Deborah. Absolutely. People first. Yep. People first. Okay. The second thing that we must do is keep the big picture in mind. We have to focus on the big picture. You have to consider Maria's situation. Um, she shared some things with Gary about what was going on with her home and what she needed. And it's clear that her leaders did not lose sight of the scheme the big scheme. They had the big picture in mind. As long as Maria has what she needs, it didn't matter, guys, that she wasn't in the showroom, okay? And we've got some new demands that are going to create some new circumstances for us, and it's going to be the leaders that see those and seize them, So seize those and seizes the opportunities, especially now because the big picture is changing every hour. We even have some chat going on about what Warren Buffett is now saying about what's going to happen when we work from home, what's going to happen to office space. We're all trying to predict what's going to happen. The way we move has to do with how we think. Yeah, and I think, you know, for this example that we use that we're focused on here today, they were ahead of the curve. <clears throat> so I said that's yes. pre-COVID-19 story, Rochelle, right? That happened a few years back, and that company was already saying, let's provide flexibility in our call centers and not treat people like their call center employees, but in this case, allow hire people with a passion for design or interior in this case and let them work from where's best for them and when you do that you're going to deliver great experience that flexibility and humanity that 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 organization showed came all the way through so if you're trying to deliver this as an organization focus on the big picture is it important that that person is sitting at a desk or is it important that you have the right person and they're able to live their life and bring their best to work well, and uh, room and board. This this leads into our third tip, Gary. Room and board. If you go to their website now that we're now that we're sharing who they are, um, they actually literally aspire to do things different differently. It's all over their site. They aspire to do things differently and that's what's happening. Maria's approaching her work differently and she's creating a different experience for Gary. So our third tip 
for a reinvented customer experience is to connect your team members' actions to the company's purpose, okay? The reason an organization exists is often captured in the mission, vision, purpose, promise, or cause, okay? it's That's the North Star, guys. That's the reason for being. It's the why, okay? Staying connected to that helps people make the right decision, okay? It's hard to predict what's going to be called for in the marketplace, but if we're connecting it all back to why we're here in the first place, the right things will get done. It's the leader's job to make those connections. I go back to Lance. You hire them because they're listening and they're willing and they're ready to grow, and then you teach them this is what we're about, and then they live into it. Yeah, and we're, we want to hire. When you think about purpose, it's our job as leaders to connect the purpose of our organization with the individual's purpose and make sure that those two things can come together. Because every day we're getting up and we're living our individual purpose and hopefully our organization's purpose at the same time. It's much better when you, as a leader, can help those individual employees connect the two. Uh, Rochelle, we, we have. have. <laughs> I see that. I think that's great. And Lance is our power tatter, so obviously he's going to get us started. But I see our, I see our, our family favorites. So Deborah's typing, Kevin's typing. Please keep those going because. We have a question. When it, when you think about leaders in your organization, we want to know how capable you feel they are today about putting people first, focusing on the big picture, and making connections. We're going to use our scale of one to five again. Um, one is not very capable yet, and th and five is very capable. This is, you know, something leaders are already doing. Where do you think leaders lie, scale of one to five? This is leaders' ability to engage their front line in that humanity, flexibility, and accessibility. We're on the high, we're all above three on this, Gary, and that's, that's good. A couple of twos. Two, three, yeah. three, four. But I didn't see any fives, Rochelle. Well, yet. only on a range. I saw one on a range, but that, you know, that's kind of, you know, it does show, you mentioned this earlier, Gary, and I'd love for you to say more about it. it oh, there's a negative one. Oh, dear. Thank you. Um, <laughs> it does depend on the level and the organ. Maybe it's just a dash. Oh, okay. Maybe it's just a dash. Sorry, Lance. You can, you can. But I put think what you're prompting me on here is, listen, uh, this is super serious comment. There's Sarah. Even threes and fours aren't going to win right yeah. now, and it's inconsistent. When a lot of you are giving ranges, but I think what you're telling us here is, well, we have some that are twos and some that are fours yep. and some that are threes and some that are fours. What we need in our organization is to deliver a consistent experience to our customers, B2B or B2C. That experience needs to be consistent. If your managers are inconsistent, your front line will be inconsistent. And let's just think about this scale. If a four is a B and a three is a C, Cs and Bs are not going to win in today's environment. Your customer experience needs to be A plus, and your leaders who engage your front line need to consistently be great to deliver that experience. And what we will tell you is many organizations are under investing in their, in their people managers. And if you're here to talk about customer experience, take two steps back from your customer. Your customer, the people delivering that on the front line, and then their manager. And the two step back to that manager is a critical linchpin to your customer experience. Okay, good. So Sarah did subdivide when she submitted her results. She said, we're here in this place, we're here in this place. And Lance said, no, it's not a dash. We, uh, there's some ca there's some leadership capability issues going on, and that's interesting because we're starting to see the connection. If you're not having success in the customer experience realm, the first place to look is the employee, but it's not necessarily the only place, right? The leaders are driving that experience. That's the, what we're saying. Yeah, Dave's got an interesting comment there. Um, thanks, Dave. Uh, purpose to serve customers sometimes gets lost in the desire to serve other stakeholders, e.g. Wall Street, Stock. age old story. And I think we are in a sea change, Dave, right now. We have said, look, focus on the customer first and everything else will, will fall in line. It's not optional. It's not nice to have anymore. Wall Street, um, what Wall Street results will come from focusing on that customer. And when you start to see the bankruptcies rolling in, as we are right now, that's just accelerated. It's not because J. Crew wasn't going to go bankrupt or Neiman Marcus wasn't going to file or malls weren't going to go dead. Those things were already happening in those retail examples. They've been accelerated. That means you've got to focus on the customer to accelerate that experience that keeps them and really think about reinventing that experience. Wall Street will follow. I know you already know yep. that. 
but thanks for bringing it. So up. Deborah's singing the praises of the importance of leadership about empathy and communication, and she's getting a lot of uh, hallelujahs uh, around that, right? And uh, I think we have a lot of assumptions about Maria's leader because of the situation that she created for you, Gary, and that's what we're looking for. Yes, and um, uh, Clarissa, as a CEO, comes out with his three points every day. It's fantastic. Wow. We cannot. The every day is great for many organizations. Um, they're doing once a month or every other week or whatever. Every day may be right or wrong for your organization, but the point is uh, if you've communicated and you think you've communicated, communicate again and again and again. Um, I want to just read this one from Rob. It's been a big innovation and crossed into lack of technology um, and accessibility. Yeah. yeah. So innovation for sure, but you've got to have what it takes to back it up. I go back to that handwritten condolence card. The innovation there, that concierge service was we're going to do handwritten cards. Wasn't backed up with having whatever the technology they use to make sure we wrote the right thing. They must come together. So customer experience and its connection to operations is also greater than ever. We have a whole separate webinar on, on that, but it's a big connection. Wow. So, we have a leadership audience, I think, with us today, Gary. I think this message is really resonating because we're not just talking about what do we do for customers. We're talking about what do leaders need to do better. It's just all over the chat. We do. Yeah. And we want to have some room for, for questions. We're really good on time right now. Um, I just lost my screen. Oh, yeah, there. it's back now. That was something interesting. Hi, everybody. Yep. <laughs> so this 20, we are in a 2023 customer experience. As you see, dramatic innovation, changing on a dime, closures, et cetera. It's because things have been accelerated three years overnight. And that customer experience has been accelerated. You must accelerate that employee experience to match at the same time. So we are not big on heavy sales pusher or route commercials. Um, so we don't show you a lot of demos here. We try to tell you some stories. But what I will say is Root is here to help. And we help by engaging your leaders and your frontline telephonically, electronically, and or face-to-face -face, or a combination of all of those. And what we know is that that customer and employee experience need to focus on humanity, flexibility, and accessibility. And even the way you deliver that communication and engagement needs to change and include those three keys. Rochelle, what about that leadership mindset? Well, yeah, so it's the thinking that's going to get us there as leaders because, yeah, so I come from a leadership background. I spent 20 years leading in operations. Uh, Root is my encore career, and I love working with leaders. And the main thing that we talk about is our mindsets because that's what is going to make the, a difference for us. I can't predict that somebody's going to ask a color or that we're going to be locked down for two months. We, we don't know what to expect as leaders, but what we do know <clears throat> is that our people are important and the big picture Robin reiterated this in the chat the why 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 we do things will always serve us you can even see it on the television with the commercials for companies that are reaching out right now they can't do a lot for you but want to support you they're they're linking back to the big picture and their purpose okay thinking along these lines will help us as leaders make the right decisions especially when there's uncertainty chaos and it gets difficult so as you think about engaging your teams you have to think about how to create that emotional connection with them to bring out the humanity, connecting them back to purpose. You have to be flexible in how you engage them so they can get that information when they want, where they want, and how they want. And you have to give them accessibility to you, the tools and the knowledge they need to deliver this reimagined customer experience. And most of all, you have to have a strategy and an outline of the culture that supports that strategy of customer experience to engage them in. So there's a lot there yes. that we can talk about. Let's talk about I think it. Yep. May, let's take some questions. Yep. And we've got about um, 15 minutes, I yep. think, 
of real time before we need to wrap up. So we're leaving this time for questions from you. Okay, and this is good. This is a great opportunity. So uh, go ahead and use the chat panel to list your questions. We've been tracking some questions as we go, but hopefully now you're at a state where you really want to, I'm going to say pick Gary's brain. So I'm just going to do a little pitch here, Gary, and let everybody know that you've got a couple of books out there on customer experience and on leadership. And I think it's really special that we would have time with you to let you talk off the cuff. And this is a great opportunity to take advantage of that. So I'm, I'm going to ask them to actually challenge you. Uh, Gary's not going to give you the Miss America question where no matter what you say, he says world peace. Um, there's right. He may surprise you. So if something's weighing heavy in your mind regarding how do we do this for our customers, how we do this for our employees, or even if it's about leadership, let's see it in the chat and let's see, let's see what, where we can work at together. Let us know. You said you were going to pick my brain. Yeah. I have about as much brain left as I have hair left. <laughs> it's, all, it's been stressful for us all, I have to say. Uh, Lance is typing. He's our power chatter. I'm curious to know what he says. And we're still about 100 strong on the line today. And, yes, we've already blown up the chat once. Let's do it again. <laughs> well, um, we've got some questions rolling in. We've got the first one from uh, Soma Hernandez. Welcome. Work at a mainly work from the office. Mm. Flexibility is not a thing. Best advice on how to build the business case. Thank you. Oh, my goodness, uh, Zoma. Thank you. So I always say start with the pocketbook in mind. Start with the wallet. Um, your best bet is to start to great, grab some data on what productivity, accuracy, whatever the measures you have, has fared during this time of remote working. And let's measure that up against how we did when we're in their office. Let's see if there's a real data case because it is likely that your people can be more productive working from home and not commuting. You've got to make the case that says we have more of our people's time, focus, and attention, and the results are the same or better. Can you get that data? And then hit them in the pocketbook. Yep. Look, we can do better this way. That's so good. Uh, Camera's in there. Would you yep. read me? <clears throat> what camera? Yeah. Yeah, well, this is interesting. This is the idea of work. I read the other day that before work was a place, work was an activity. What are your thoughts around that? Yeah, so it's interesting on that. Work, uh, the, the expressions that I hear these days and that I also relate to is work is the new community, work is the new church, things like that. Um, work is where a lot of us get our key socialization. And we find out that in a work day, people are only get actually three to four hours worth of work done. Work is the activity, I believe, in my own experiences and in our own company, that work as an activity is actually enhanced these days um, coming from uh, home. Now, we don't want to lose that connectivity. People want to feel connected to their work and their people. So right now, I think it's about finding the right balance of community and work as an activity. Uh, and I'm interested, Tamara, if you think that work as an activity has e increased or decreased in your organization um, during this time and if you're indeed working from home these days. Okay, so David's got an organization where the culture is good. So David's throwing out the, the C word. We're going to get to talk about culture, which is awesome. Um, culture is good, but there's some major changes because of this COVID uncertainty. So what advice, Gary, do you have for keeping culture great? Yeah. It's there. How do I we think, keep it? Um, David, the first question you have to ask yourself is, is our strategy changing uh, to, in our response to the changing marketplace. If your strategy is changing, you have to take a look at your culture. While it may be great, it doesn't mean that it's the right culture moving forward. So let's make sure that your culture is right for your strategy if that's changing. How do you keep culture great? Well, you have to identify the culture keys, and we have a webinar specifically on this. This is work that we do. Identify your culture keys the three or four keys that make your culture great, then identify the people that you see that are best in living those keys and enlist them as part of your culture team to go out and make sure that they are overtly engaging others in those key activities and those key emotions in your culture. So identify what makes your, go back. First, make sure that your culture is still going to be the right culture moving forward. Identify the keys that make the culture great. Identify your culture champions and ambassadors mm -hmm. and create a plan for them to go out and engage others in that hand-to-hand -hand combat. All right, so Tamara's talking to you, Gary. She's in banking, okay? 
So that that's the uh, industry that she's relating to, and the greater flexibility and humanity around people working remotely is is showing up. Yep. Documented, Tamara. Yeah. Go get the data that supports it. You're seeing it. Where a lot of people are seeing it. Make sure that you can prove it and bring it and show the organization how they can make more money or create greater efficiency by keeping things the way they are in this changed environment. All right, so some of this lockdown, you know, the, the directives that we be at home is allowing us to get this information. And it's interesting, we can see some, a couple of responses in the chat, Gary, about what people are doing with that information. So Lance, it was one of our power chatters, is weighing in about how we've got some really great things going on remotely, and the senior leaders are thinking about it, uh, but wanting us to come back to the office and then using a lot of policy and procedure <laughs> instead of celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, unfortunately, this has a lot to do with where you sit in the business and what your influence is. If you're not an influencer, you need to find a champion or an influencer can, who can help. Um, I think at this time, it's very good. I know we're doing at Root, we're doing COVID-19 surveys of managers and employees uh, for our clients to help them understand what they want and how they're feeling at this time. So you may just consider seeing if you can get an influencer in their business to really get a pulse check, an, emo an emotional pulse check of your organization so we can show leaders how people are truly feeling. What they don't want is a revolt. This is their time as leaders to lean in and listen, but you've got to get them the information. So Lance, let's start with, are you the advocate or can you get a champion who can go to leaders and really ask them to take the emotional pulse of the organization before people come back, meaning now? We can help you. With That's that. good. So Dave is frustrated because we still have retailers that aren't thinking about safety or health. Yeah, they're not wearing masks. There's no discipline around distancing. It's requiring, a, you know, we're still having to touch screens to put in our PIN numbers. Yeah, reflections on that, Gary. That's interesting. You tell me. Okay. This is the area where I'm going to be bold and say I don't, I am as frustrated as you are, and I'm more frustrated by the people. I have been out very infrequently in the last seven weeks, only in a half to situation with a mask. And I see other human beings in the same grocery store, not wearing a mask, getting right up in your grill, stand back. So can we, I don't think our retailers can become police. I think they can put up the signs. I think they can use commercial time to explain policy. I think they can be around to help guide but I think it's more about making sure that we have an educated public. Who are these idiots who don't have personal space? A jogger went past me this morning, like face to face. I couldn't go in the road. It's like, slow down, move over to the grass. So sorry for the tangent. What I'd say is sure. the retailers aren't practicing it. They are responsible for putting out the signs, for being very public about their policy. But I think it has a lot to do with the general public not all being on the same page right now. Okay, Robin's alive in the chat. I would love to, I love, love for you to respond to this. She says, my organization has a huge gap in awareness, thinking, and activity around the connection between internal customer experience and external customer experience. Yeah. Okay, the focus has been on operational customer experience, and leadership wonders why employees aren't engaged. Oh, These are not painful. Robin, I'd love to know the industry, and I'm not asking you to put that out there. It's not uncommon. There is, there is again, you need a, a champion on the leadership team to help the, uh, help the leaders really understand the connectivity between the people. The data is out there. The results is out there. They need to be shown and make that investment. So what I'd say is, uh, please check, Robin, there's usually a bright spot in your organization where you have exceptional customer experience people who have been able to um, thrive even though the organization doesn't value what they're doing. Can we find out who those people are who are delivering that exceptional experience, those human beings, look at their results and show those to the leaders and say, for those people who have a great manager or are able to thrive in spite of the environment, here's the elevated level that they're able to deliver and the results they're able to get and compare them for those people who are sort of down and don't have that same experience. Is it possible to show the difference right with your own organization by finding those bright spots that you have? And it may be a bigger conversation, so I'm always happy to talk to you. You have my contact information here um, and happy to talk to you 
Um, I, I see that our I see that our email is not there, okay. but I'll put mine in the chat. Okay, put it in the chat, Gary. And here's here's a question from Marjorie. This is really good. It's how do you emphasize the need and urgency for your employees to skill up for this 2023 without creating anxiety about their job security? Because that's the situation right now. We because we can't uh -huh. see it, we're afraid of it. So I love this question. It's probably um, at the heart of, of how we think at root. So the anxiety thing is right. We don't want to scare people. But what we do need to do is treat everybody as, they're, as if they're smart because they are. We hire smart people no matter what their role is, right? The IQ of your front line is the same as your executive team. They're just at a different place in life. So think about these things. Engage your people in the current state of our business and the marketplace. Tell them a story about that desired future state and where we want to be and outline the roadmap on how we're going to get there. In other words, share that big picture with them because they're smart and they'll understand. What frustrates me is when I meet a leader that says, well, I'm not sure they're going to get this story, Gary. Well, of course they are. And so engage your people as the smart adults that you hired. Tell them where you're at today, where you want to go tomorrow, and the, the steps that we're going to take to get there and what you need specifically from them. People want to be a part of a winning team, and they want to know how they can contribute their best. Just share the information with them. Excellent. Many people care. Let me just one more thing on that. Many organizations go straight to, let me train you to do something different. Mm -hmm. Training people to do something differently is absolutely the last thing you do. You engage them in why change, what's changing, and then how we want you to change. But you've got to start with the why, that big picture story. Good. Okay, so we're feeling good about this banter that we have with you, Gary, and just being able to ask you questions and have you reflect. And uh, it has circled us back to the importance of why, the importance of the big picture, the importance of leader, of leaders, yes, and then um, I, th some new thoughts that you've been adding is this idea that we should, you know, talk to one another as adults, engage each other in the future, uh, let us, you know, find our own path. So uh, lots of appreciation for that. That's good. It's so fun to get to talk. I say, you know, we're, we're still at 84 Strong. We're passionate about what we do. We're passionate about our organizations. We're here because we want to do, do make things better. So, and this is how we're spending our time this morning. We're so glad that you're here. Oh my gosh, Clara, do you want to talk about what not to do, Gary? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's do oh my let's do that. <laughs> Clara. Hi Clara. I love the name. It was my great grandmother's name. Um, good to see you today and great question. Thank you. Tell. That's what I'm going to say not to do. Yell and tell. Many organizations, especially under stress, get into I'm going to send out 17 emails that tell you what to do, or I'm going to get on this web blast or town hall and tell you what to do. We can't be in yell and tell mode. We have to be leaning in and asking people, what do you see? We're asking our front line, what do you see working? What are your challenges? What do you need? What are our customers, B2B and B2C, saying that they need from us? So don't yell and tell, lean in and ask. Then, so the what not to do is, Yell and yep. tell. Uh, and one more thing. You've got to be pretty serious right now. And that's perfect because when people get squeezed, what's on the inside of them comes out. So if we've developed some good leadership habits, then when things get hard, those are going to excel. And that's what we need is to make sure that everybody is poised because I don't think it's going to get easier anytime soon. Okay. Good. So I, I see us getting, uh, getting close to time. Yes. Let's take one last question okay. or so. Okay. And – uh, encourage people. We've got a short time here on webinar, but I have to tell you how much um, we've enjoyed having you here and how vibrant you've been in the chat. We appreciate I love that. It. So um, we're getting lots of um, affirmation here. Good advice and thanks. Thanks for the time. Thanks so much for appreciate this. Appreciate y'all. So let me ask all of you, um, please, if you need any further information, we are here to help. Don't feel obligated. Don't feel like Rochelle or I don't want to pressure you or try to sell you something. We're all in this together. We are passionate about customer experience. We are passionate about the leaders who deliver the employee experience, and we are here to help. So don't be shy to reach out to us. Gene Magenta at rootinc.com, rrogers at rootinc.com. 
We appreciate you all. Rochelle, any closing comments? Yeah, we just, it's been nice for you. Uh, we're obviously with our people. You guys are tracking along with us, and we look forward to keeping the conversation going.